Today we're getting a taste of some Italian cuisine with a Nevada spin. We're cooking lasagna and garlic bread in a Dutch oven. Hey, how's it going? Good, Terry, how are you? Good to see you, John. Nice seeing you, how's everything? Very good, how was yeah. the trip? Traveling's going good. Awesome, you know, I'm kind of okay with being here. This is pretty nice. That's our beautiful spot here in the mountains. Boy, no kidding. It. We're all gonna have a good time. Well, that's why I'm here, to have a good time. This recipe also comes with a history lesson. Tell me more about Dutch ovens. Okay, Dutch ovens, it's just a term that refers to this size and style of a pot. They call it Dutch because they think the whole casting of iron originated in the Dutch country in Europe. Okay. So then it uh, came into the United States and it's enjoyed a really long, interesting history, but primarily during the days of the gold rush, the mining booms in the 1800s, and especially with cattle drives and ranches, you would see these Dutch ovens being used out on the range. In the early 1700s, an Englishman named Abraham Darby traveled to the Netherlands to check out a casting system adopted by the Dutch for their cast iron ovens. Upon returning, he patented a similar process, but the name Dutch oven stuck. What exactly are we gonna be making today? Well, as you can see on our menu board, we are making a meat lasagna today. We're making garlic cheese bread. Let's get going. Okay. All right. We get ready to start on the first item on the menu, the lasagna. Are you ready? I have washed my hands, Teach. Woohoo! Okay, why don't you get your hands in here? Okay. Grease that really, really good. In my opinion, it really helps keep my cast iron seasoned properly. Huh. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put together a very basic lasagna dish. Okay. Okay. Good. So I have some sauce that I made up yesterday. Nice. So why don't you ladle in just an, a little layer of the sauce first. To make a sauce like Terry's here, you need to combine one pound of cooked Italian sausage, one pound of cooked ground beef, and one jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce. Add two cans of diced tomatoes, two garlic cloves, and a large onion. Toss in a splash of burgundy wine, garlic salt, and Italian seasoning. Then, just let it simmer for 30 minutes. An oven, when you put the lid on it, it really creates a lot of moisture. So it's not anything that you have to worry about um, boiling these noodles first. Oh, okay. You just lay them in there dry. Since you're such an expert sauce spooner, put, put another layer of sauce on Round there. two, same thing, just? Same thing. Same thing, okay. And then we're gonna add some cheese to that. You're an easy teacher to impress. We add a couple more layers of noodles, sauce, and of course, cheese. So oh, you're going another layer. Oh yeah. What is this, five now? What, what are we on? Uh, I think we're only on four. And all we need to top it off is one more melty layer of cheese. So Terry, tell me about how these Dutch ovens actually work and the, and the heat. So right down here, we've got an air space. Right. These, these um, ovens have legs on them. So we'll put some coals underneath when we get it to cooking over here on our hard surface, and the air will travel around there. And then what we'll do, we'll put this lid on, and if you notice that this lid has a lip on it, okay? So that allows us to put coals on the top. The lip and the feet are the modifications early Americans made to the original Dutch oven. Paul Revere is known as the inventor of these features. This is ready. Our coals are about five minutes out before they're ready to put on. We want them nicely white on the edges. Okay. So they're almost ready. So are you ready to do the next dish? Yeah, I think I'm on a roll. So we're gonna make this really nice garlic cheesy bread. We're gonna take a little shortcut with Pillsbury today. We take this biscuit dough and spread it nice and thin like a pizza crust. So this stuff is pretty elastic, so you can just kind of pull it around the edges if you okay. need to. For the paste, we combine garlic, mayo, and basil. Then we top it off with some Parmesan cheese. Split it into it. thirds All right. and then spread it over that dough. Looks like the Dutch ovens are ready for the coals. So you don't need that much? No. Okay, all right, So now okay. I want you to take that big oven and place it right in the center of those coals. Okay. Using the coals, we make a fire ring slightly larger than the oven. This way, the heat will travel up the side and cook our food evenly. How long will this take? These will probably only take about 20 to 25 minutes. They're really not that thick. So for the smaller ones, you've got maybe eight, eight to 10 coals. Yeah. And it's not just the size of the oven, but it's also what I'm cooking in there uh -huh. doesn't need as much heat. That's a pretty dense, thick thing, so that needs a little bit more heat. It's time to let the hot coals work their magic while we sit back and relax. Before we know it, the bread is ready. So this is gonna go really nicely with our lasagna. 
Does that, I don't know, I got these things. Does anybody want one? I don't know. How about you, Noah? You want one? Honey, come and get it! Our star dish is ready to be served. There is nothing better than sharing a delicious meal with a full table of friends and family. Bon appetit. And the next time you're on a cattle drive or you're on the open plains, or maybe you're just having friends and family over for a nice dinner, try eating like they did in old time outdoor Nevada. Get yourself a Dutch oven or two or three. You won't be disappointed, I promise.